In this video, I will teach you what you can do with an Ethernet GPI link box from Skyhoy. First, I'll show you how you can use an Ethernet GPI link together with any Skyhoy controller so you can send a GPI trigger with a button press. And next, I'll show you how you can really easily attach two Ethernet GPI link boxes to pass GPI from one box through an Ethernet cable and back to the other GPI system. And we'll also talk a lot about how flags um, are working in this video. So let's get in control. The first thing I will demonstrate is based on using a Ragfly Uno, one of Skyhoy's legendary rag panels, to control and receive feedback from the Ethernet GPI link over here. This Ethernet GPI link is actually a dual version. It has two plugs, so it has 16 inputs and 16 outputs, but we are only using eight of them today. This is a little PCB with a plug that we have developed for test purposes, so we don't sell this, but it's really simple. It has uh, small switches, and if I press the switch, it will um, short the GPI input on this box and send a signal over here. So let me just demonstrate. As I'm pressing this switch, I'm shorting that input, and you see a button is lighting up over here. If I press the second one, second button is lighting up, third, and so on, all the way up to eight. So I have all these buttons coded in a sense so when I press this one over Ethernet cable, it communicates back to the panel that this switch has now been flipped and I light up the button in response. Okay, we can go the other way as well because the Ethernet GPI link box also has eight relays on each uh, of the two plugs. So 16 relays in all in this dual version but we only use the first eight. And whenever one of these relays are shorted, you see an LED light up here. So when I press this button, you see I've coded it to flip the relay over the ethernet cable in this box. And I go to the next one, you can see all these LEDs are lighting up. Now, in broadcast workflows, because this looks really simple, it's LEDs, yeah. But in broadcast workflows, this is very, very useful because many devices either are able to, um, they have an exposed output that will short something when some event happens, like I am recording, then I'm shorting this so that you can attach it to a lamp or something, or to a Skyhoy system in, through an Ethernet GPI link box. Or the other thing is the, uh, the case, you can start recording by uh, shorting an input on a recording device. It is also uh, very much used in uh, video switcher systems where you have uh, tele lamps and cameras which are also um, told to light up by GPI triggers like this. So you find it all over the place but it's really simple and when I'm now going to explain the configuration behind you need to understand the concept of flags. So the way we transport these simple bits of information, which is essentially either on, off, um, one or zero, if you are in a binary way of working, um, we call it flags. So you can also imagine that it's like a flag is when you raise the flag and then you lower the flag and you raise the flag and you lower the flag. And, and this signal needs to be transported over Ethernet from one point to another, okay? So um, it is flags that is driving this or registers inside. There are many ways to think about it, but the essence is how will these two devices be able to share the same flag memory because that's in fact what is happening. They are sharing the same 16 flags and this device over here is setting flag number one and this device is responding to it. And over here I'm setting flag number eight and this is responding to it. So let's look at how the configuration is. Actually, we are basing this on raw panel. Raw panel is a protocol that you know in many Skyhawk products, it, is, uh, it has been in, in Unisketch panels for a very long time. And you also know if you have seen our latest webinars and so on, how um, raw panel is the foundation for how the new Blue Pill Reactor platform interacts with Unisketch panels. So it's a really central and important technology. On the screen, I have the Ragfly Uno and I also have the configuration for the Ethernet GPI link box. And let's first look at this one. Um, I, I actually want to bypass quickly the configuration of the individual buttons to show you what I have done here. I have enabled something called TCP server. So this one has a TCP server on it that responds to raw panel commands from this one over here. And that's the important thing you need to know. Install TCP server in this end and notice this IP address. That's also important because this is what this one is talking to. So I have static IP, I have TCP server enabled here, and that's all I need for the connectivity part of this on this panel. If I go to the Ethernet GPI link box on the other side and uh, we study the connectivity down here, you see that I have enabled Unisketch raw panel device call on this one and I'm pointing it to the IP address of the rack 
fly Uno. So now this one will connect to this one and then they will share the same flag memory. Okay, let's look at what the uh, how the output on the Ethernet GPILing box works. The output is already uh, listed here. If I want to uh, see multiple hardware components on my controller, I can hold down the shift key and I can select multiple of them like this. And then you'll see as I scroll down in the interface in a moment, I see all eight listed here. So if we study the outputs, you'll see that each of these outputs are listening to Unisket's raw panel flag. In other words, it is using the raw panel protocol to listen to a flag on the RegFly Uno. So we are now looking at the um, configuration of the eight outputs. So here we see the eight outputs and you can see how the first output is listening for feedback flag number eight. Feedback is important because it's the feedback that drives the output. And I'll come back to what you see over here. But basically, when you operate with flags, you have something just where you just set the flag over here. This is for sending or setting. And then you have feedback flag, which is for receiving. And they can be the same, but they can also be uh, different, which can be useful because sometimes you want the same button to send one flag, but receive on another one. You can also consider it like channels, binary channels. I'm, I'm sending out on flag channel zero and I'm receiving back on flag channel eight. That's what you, you see right here. Now, the output on an Ethernet GP link box has no way it can send anything. So in fact, it doesn't matter what the first one says. However, this panel has uh, the buttons have two things. They have both an input when you press the button that will send something. And it also has an output, which is the LED color that lights up as you receive something. Now, this is output. So the relays in this one respond to the feedback flag number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so forth, all the way down to 15. So what would be cool now would be to go over to the RegFly Uno, as we'll do now, and then open this up here because if you remember, when I pressed the button X9, this one, this is where the LED was lighting up and so forth. So therefore, if we study what X9, 10, 11 and so on does, you see that this one is setting flag number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So even if I, uh, wait, break this out in a separate browser, you can see that over here I now have my Ragfly Uno, I have over here my GPI link box. So let's just try and compare these and see how I'm setting flag number eight and it gets picked up over here on output number one. I'm setting flag nine, it gets picked up over here on flag nine. That's how it works together. Notice that on the Ragfly Uno, I am setting the system flag. That's the internal memory in this guy, while over here, I am listening to the Unisket raw panel flag. In other words, I am listening to the flags on the server that I'm connected to, okay? So this is why they are sharing the same flag memory. So that was how my buttons here are able to control the outputs. Now, if you change over here, you see you have many other ways you can manipulate this. You can have it um, also with toggle and so that when you press repeatedly, it like turns it on and off. And of course, with virtual triggers, you're also able to manipulate flags based on events on various devices. For instance, you would be able to listen to a source routed to an output on a video router or a source routed somewhere or tally on a video switcher. Listen to that and then let that um, influence the state of the flag on the, the controller and then this box is listening to that. So it becomes a conversion uh, basically from one protocol to another. So I'm just showing you in a very basic sense what flags is today and you can manipulate these flags using virtual triggers to connect it to uh, network events, which is super cool. Or TSL, which is a protocol you can also install and add like this. We have separate videos on that. So let's focus on this connectivity today between these two devices. Now, um, we also need to see how we can then do the opposite. When I press this button, I'm lighting up this, this uh, button over here. And um, let's do the two things. First, I want to see the inputs. So I'll just uh, select input, uh, let's say uh, two, three, and four. So just these four, I think that's enough for our little explanation. So let's see what is happening here. Now, um, as I am um, pressing this input, you see that I'm setting flag number one or zero one, two, and three on the Unisketch raw panel flag over here. 
uh, action. And then I go over to my Rack Fusion Live, and now I'm interested to see what is on X, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now you can see that these are all um, setting flag number zero. Actually, I don't intend these to be used as buttons. In, in this case, we're just using them as LEDs, okay? Um, but the important thing is that their feedback flag is set to zero, one, two, and three. And this is why as I'm pressing this button, this is flag number zero being set, this is flag number one, this is flag number two, and flag number three being set over here as I'm pressing these. Um, okay, funny thing, let's let's just try to instead map this down on the LEDs down here below. So, um, or also do so. So in fact, what I could fancy would be to um, just bring this one up and now remember the shift key. So if I press the shift key and I press the little LED just below, let's just do this for these two. Then let's see if we can actually move this down. So what I want to do is to copy this one and insert down here. And I want to copy this one for button number two and insert down here. And then I could just remove these two so that I'm not using the buttons. But now we should see the LED bar underneath the buttons light up instead. Let's just quickly see if this works. So I'm saving. And you see some kind of change over here. And now as I'm pressing here, I rerouted the feedback from this one over to the LED bars. And now for the rest of them, it's still the buttons. But I'm sure you get the point. In the second part of the video, I will basically change the server part from the Rackfly Uno to another Ethernet GPI link. And all it takes is for this one, which is the um, has the Unisketch um, raw panel device core installed, talking to this one, I just flip the IP address over to the other one. They are both fitted with default configurations, but let's first inspect this one. So what I will do is I will take out the a USB cable that is being used for um, firmware updates and various uh, configurations. So I'll just bring it over here. And then in my firmware updater from Skahoy, I will now um, press local config because it's probably on the same network. So a few things that I want to notice is that I have this IP address 200 for this device. Let's just zoom out a little bit here. And um, let me just see. It has TCP server installed. That was the same thing as the Rackfly uh, Uno. That's great. This IP address. Okay. It all seems fine. And it has the default configuration. Let's just see what that was. So how, how do I know the default configuration? What you do is you go to the online configuration. This is just another little tip. You see uh, for the Ethernet GPI link, there's quite a bunch of default configurations. These are all the blue ones here are all uh, configurations we provide that uh, has a little description where you can read what they do and what they are set up to do. But this one is very popular because it is the 2x8 GPIO TCP server installed on this guy. Guess what is installed on this guy? That would be this one, the 2x8 GPIO Unisketch TCP client that talks to the server. So, but the server's on this one. This is fine. I got the IP address, right? That was 200. And now I will go over to this one. So if I want to be absolutely sure I get the right IP of this, I can connect my little USB cable, uh, go to my firmware updater, and then press local config. And it's going to... Um, it's just sometimes you need to press it once again. And it goes to the IP address of this one. So if I had known that, and if the web server was enabled, I could also just have typed it in. Now, um, let me see. We need to change the IP address because I was previously communicating to this guy and that was on 219 and now this one is 200. So I'll just change the fourth octet of the IP address to this, press save. Uh, actually, I should press save and reboot. Um, so let's press save and reboot. And uh, the controller is now rebooting. Actually, if we go over to the serial monitor of the firmware updater here on this box, you can see um, sometimes that there's some utility in knowing what is happening here. Actually, we have another video that will explain you what you see in the serial monitor so you understand a little bit more of this because it can be very useful for um, uh, basically um, uh, bug fixing or, or finding out what is happening. And even right now, it's really useful because we can see how we are uh, using the Unisketch TCP client talking to IP address 200. That's supposed to be this guy over here. Also, it reveals to us that we are connected to client. And Unisketch TCP client has been initialized. That all sounds like these two would already be talking to each other. So let's see what happens if we press the buttons. We'll just bring them into the into the uh, picture here. So um, with the little test PCBs that I have. So I'm very excited to see what happens when I press this one. 
I would see an LED light up on the other one, okay? So let's just quickly go through. I see all eight channels of inputs on this one communicated over to the outputs on this one, all right? Now, if I do the opposite, I short the inputs on this one. The, the question is, is it reflected over here? And yes, it is. So actually, everything worked out exactly like I wanted. So we started out by looking at the Rackfly Uno, where we used buttons to trigger relays and also feedback LED information from these switches to now having two boxes without any interface moving forth and back, switch triggers and relay uh, shorts on the other end. And now it's up to you to Im imagine or identify where in your video workflows this would be very useful. But it's here and it has been for a very long time and it's supported across any Skyhawk controllers.